This video describes the processes of how a vet diagnoses and treats a case of squamous cell papilloma in an older Cavalier King Charles. These processes form part of the standard operating procedures at Topio Vets. A large strawberry-like lump is spotted by the young lady owner one day. She informed her father and brought the dog to Topio Vets. The patient is a Cavalier King Charles male, 10 years in Singapore. The history says that the dog was not active, had difficulty eating, excessive salivation, and sometimes blood can be seen dripping from the mouth. What is the problem with this old dog? An old dog is like part of the house furniture. Family members, especially children, who grow up with him love him very much. But they have not had much time with him, unlike the time when he was a new puppy. The older dog is a family member for most Singaporeans nowadays. Visits to groomers regularly, good food, dog treats of various brands, and plenty of water available at all times. The dog's mouth is seldom examined by most dog owners, and bad breath is usually tolerated by many Singaporean dog owners. Dental checkups are not usually done, and the rotten teeth drop out. Many owners are not bothered when they see their old dogs dropping teeth. Oral tumours develop in some of these dogs. Their health is no longer a priority as they age. The older dog is always happy to greet the owner and is a good companion to the senior citizen's parents and retirees, but many dog owners in Singapore do not have the time to send the older dog for dental checkup or animal health screening. In 2010 to 2011, Dr. Singh has noted an increase in the number of younger Singaporeans seeking dental treatment for their older dogs. The younger generation of Singaporeans are better educated and more concerned about the welfare of the older pets, and this is good news for the four legged companions. Now, returning to his case, one Sunday day in August 2012, the owners of a male 10 year old Cavalier King Charles saw a pinkish lump appearing on the front of the lower jaw, covering the two front teeth. It grew bigger and bigger. The father and his daughter consulted Dr. Singh. At Topayo Vets, Dr. Daniel Singh was on duty and Dr. Singh was present. Is it cancerous? The owner asked Dr. Daniel and I. If it doubles in size within a week, it is likely to be cancerous, Dr. Singh said. So how do we find out if it's cancerous? What can I do to resolve the dog's oral tumor problem? The father asked. The financial cost must be explained fully before any operation is done. There are several processes to be addressed to ensure a high standard of veterinary care as a defense against negligence litigation. But the owner must give his consent and that is where personality and financial conflicts come in. Next, we'll be introducing the different um, the full procedure for the oral tumour. First, it will be a biopsy. As recommended by the vet professors during undergraduate studies, this will be adopted by most vets, especially the recent graduates. This is a standard practice as taught in the university. A small piece of the oral tumour is cut out and sent to the laboratory for analysis of its type. Cancerous or benign? If the biopsy shows that it is not cancerous, then there is no need to do any surgery. But biopsy takes time and involves anesthesia, sometimes as long as 7 to 14 days. Not much time is available in this case as the tumour was said to be fast growing. It may be malignant and must be excised within 24 hours. Some vets do biopsy and find the tumour non-cancerous. Some tell the owner there is no need for surgery. Some owners decide that they don't want surgery to remove the tumour since it's not cancerous. As the weeks pass by, the tumour grows bigger. Excessive salvation 
and blood in the mouth, bad breath and difficulty eating. Bacterial infection. By then, the owner has no choice but to get the gum tumor excised. Subsequently, an x-ray is done to find out whether the tumor has invaded the jaw bone and below the gums. Due to economic reasons, this was not done in case in this case, as vet's cost needs to be as low as possible. Next, a blood test is conducted. Health screening is strongly advised before anesthesia and surgery for all patients, especially in older dogs. Anesthetic risks are much higher in older dogs. There is always the possibility that the old dog may die on the operating table. When the owner hears that the dog may die on the operating table, he may decide not to get the surgery done. Some deem the vet as incompetent and consulted another vet. A health screening should be suggested by the vet to let the owner know whether the risks are high or not. I advise a blood test to screen the health of the Cavalier King Charles, Dr. Daniel said. The owners must consent to take the anesthetic risk if they give the permission for the surgery in every case. No surgeon can guarantee no risk in anesthesia, whether in humans or in animals. So this is the results of the blood test and it has indicated a bacterial infection. The liver and the kidneys were functioning normally. And finally, the father agreed to carrying out the surgery and antibiotics were given to the dog. Next, we need to decide what type of anesthesia to use. IV anesthesia or gas anesthesia or both. IV anesthesia is shorter acting than gas anesthesia. Intubation, a breathing tube connects through anesthetic gas and oxygen to the dog. It's usually done in dental scaling which will be performed after oral tumor removal surgery. But this dog had a big oral tumor in the front of the mouth, obstructing the insertion of the endotracheal tube. No intubation as we need good access to the tumor and to excise all if possible. It is growing fast, said one of the doctors. The dormitor and ketamine for at 25% calculated do dosage for a young healthy dog was sufficient for electro-surgical excision. Dental scaling was done after that. The old dog survived the anesthesia and that was what mattered most for the owners. It is not always possible for every old dog to survive anesthesia during surgery. Therefore, it is wiser to remove the tumour when it is smaller and when the dog is younger. This is an old dog. Explain in detail the anesthetic risks and the death on the operating table and operation and post-op complications. An informed consent is needed. The form is to be signed by the owner. In any case, the vet must deliver a dog alive at any end of the surgery, but no vet can guarantee. Therefore, assess the risk and get informed consent. As a gas anesthesia, the teeth need to be extracted and dental scaling needs to be done, which means surgery will take longer than normal. Isofrain gas top-up anesthesia to be delivered by an endotracheal tube is required. But this endotracheal tube blocks the operating view. IV anesthesia is the best, Dr. Singh said to Dr. Daniel. Will this be effective? Yes. If you know how to use the appropriate drugs, the dosage must be just sufficient for surgery but safe for the older dog. 50% of Domitor and Ketamine 4 formula was used in this case. It was effective. Topping up with isofluorine gas wasn't required. Moving on to histology. Is the oral tumor cancerous or not? The father asked. Nobody can tell from the physical appearance, Dr. Singh said. The tumour needs to be analysed by the lab, and the tumour cells must be seen under the microscope, if there are any. This is the process of histology. Do you want to get the tumour sent for histology? 
It is best to get the owner's permission to send the tumour for histology to check whether it is cancerous or not, as some owners may have a budget or do not wish to spend more money. On a side note, write AMA in the medical report if the owner is not in favour of histology, blood tests or any processes advised by the vet. This record serves as evidence to protect the vet in the event of negligence litigation. In this case, electrosurgery, not medication, is done because it is unprofessional to give medication to the owner to treat oral tumour as some owners may insist on having them as an alternative to the high risk of anesthesia during surgery. However, the tumour will not disappear. Electrosurgical excision includes extraction of three incisor teeth enclosed by the papilloma. Electrosurgery was done by Dr. Daniel. Transact at least 2 mm from the tumour and remove the entombed incisors, Dr. Singh said. However, this is not possible in this case. X-rays are not done to see whether the bone is involved to lower veterinary costs for the owner at this time. The owner consent for the gum tumour to be sent for histology and there was good news for the owner. However, the papilloma may return as it is extremely difficult to completely excise it. So, the tumour was not cancerous. In conclusion, the diagnosis is squamous cell papilloma. The dog goes home 24 hours after surgery and there was no more gum bleeding. So be kind to your older dog, examine your older dog's mouth weekly for oral tumours. Small tumours are much easier to remove and there is a much lower anaesthetic risk. For the post-op reviews and advices and tips for post-surgical management, for post-op reviews, 3 monthly next 12 months, owner needs to be advised and reminded by the vet, but this is seldom done. Dog has not returned at the destined date. Older dogs must be checked by the owner daily and any mouth tumours must be removed when it is small. In this case, the tongue covered the papilloma until it became chronically infected and swollen. It could have existed for some weeks without the owner seeing it. Old and unhealthy dogs above 5 years must be given 25-50% to 50 of the calculated dosage of anesthesia and for younger dogs to lessen the risks of heart failure.